from Hollywood, it's everybody's game of strategy, knowledge, and fun. It's Tic Tac Doe. And now, here's our host, Jim Caldwell. Sounds like an audience that has lots of energy, and that's exactly what we need. And there's a good reason for it, too, because we have two players. We're in the middle of a game. They already tied once, and uh, I think it's time to meet them. Charlie, who are they? Well, Jim Howard, current champion, is a student whose interests include tennis and French. Her winnings total in cash and prizes, $11,150. Meet Holly Ladd. And her opponent is an aspiring comedian whose interests include windsurfing and volleyball. Meet Candace Kraft. Candace. Nice to have us uh, have us all here again to yes. kind of go at it again. You're a volleyball player. Are you good? Uh, I say so. Yeah. Yeah. How do you how do you like the game? Um, I like it when it gets real competitive and a lot of spiking. Spiking. Yes. And did I hear somewhere you're also a bartender part time or something? I bartended to pay the bills. Yeah. So do you spike drinks or spike the ball? <laughs> Both. Oh, okay. Well, I, I know you're you're very competitive, and of course the champion over here, Holly Ladd, is very competitive as well. She's a tennis player. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're both into sports, right? Mm -hmm. Welcome back, Holly. Thank you. You know, uh, you're a net sport player, right? You could say that. How good are you? Uh, I'm pretty good. I managed to get myself on the college team. You did? Yes. Terrific. So. We'll see if you can continue to play on the tic-tac-toe team as we check out what you've got so far. What is it? You know exactly what it is. $11,150. Good luck to both of you. Let's get into a game. Now, last time you were here, we were, as I said, in the middle of a game. The second game it was, and here are the categories that you were both playing with. They were... Fads and Follies, Auction, General Science, Animal Stars, Presidents, Showdown, Maps of Nations, Opponent's Choice, and Women in Film. The red boxes, of course, meaning those are special categories. Now let's take a look at how the board was situated when we last left. Looked like that. Two zeros, two O's, I should say, and two X's. And how much in the pot? I think a lot of money, $2,400. So let's get into it. Let's shuffle them up. Holly, you're going to start us off as our champion. Women in film to block. Okay, we're going to jump into this with a block attempt immediately. Holly, in 1982, this actress set a record by winning her fourth Oscar, this time for her role in the film on Golden Pond for the block. Name her. Jane Fonda. No, Katherine Hepburn. Holly, you don't get the block. $2,400 in the pot. Let's go ahead and shuffle. And Candace. I'll have to take Animal Stars for the win. Candace, if you can answer this question, you will become our new champion. Now listen carefully. The delightful story by E.B. White entitled Charlotte's Web featured a spider named Charlotte and her friend, a shy animal named Wilbur, for the game. And a grand total of $2,600 in cash. What kind of animal was Wilbur? A pig. You've won! All right, Candace, a nice vertical tic-tac-toe is yours. And how much? $2,600. Oh I know, Candace, when you first came on the show the last time, you were very nervous. Yes. I imagine winning a little money makes you relax a little bit, yes? Uh-uh. No? <laughs> well, we'll see how relaxed you are when you play the dragon in the bonus game in just a moment. Holly, Holly lad, we have to say goodbye. You have been a great player. Thank I you. think everyone would acknowledge that she's done so well. How many games? Three games. You're leaving us. Cash and prizes, $11,150. We wish you the best of luck, Holly. Thank you very much. And we'll take a break and be right back with more of the game. We'll see how Candace does against the Dragon right after this. Candace Kraft is our new champion. And Candace, come on over here. Let's do the bonus game. You're welcome. She said thank you. I had nothing to do with it. It was all because you're a terrific player. Now, you know that behind these numbers, various amounts of money, a tick, a tack, and of course that 
Dragon. Sounds just like that. You want to get $1,000 or more, Candace, or get the tick and the tack, and you'll win this terrific prize package. Charlie's going to tell us about it. Well, Candace, we want to be quite clear about these gifts. Each features a transparent substance. First, Candace, you'll peer through flawless glass lenses for a close-up view of the universe with this powerful telescope. See the stars with this astronomical telescope by Bushnell, one of the finest telescopes in the world. Big 910-millimeter objective lens focal length brings heavenly bodies 227 times closer. Furnished by Bushnell. Then for a gift both transparent and sparkling, you'll have a set of fine crystals. Selected with a $300 gift certificate from its general store, JT's General Store. Select from fashions, houseware, and much more in the JT's General Store in-home shopping catalog. Next, we have a substance that can be either transparent or translucent. It's the ice that comes from this compact refrigerator. From Quasar's Lifestyle Series, this compact 5-cubic-foot refrigerator offers slide-out shelves, full-width freezer compartment and crisper drawer furnished by Quasar. And finally, Candace, here is a gift worth more than $1,300, featuring a transparent crystal, this glittering diamond watch. This Jules Jurgensen Ladies Watch is designed in 14 karat gold with braided 14 karat gold bracelet. Decorative two tone dial set with one diamond elegance by Jules Jurgensen. This transparent package is worth in cash and prizes over $3,350. Sounds like a good package, huh? I love it. You said you need the compact refrigerator and you want the, the Ladies Watch, right? <laughs> yes. Okay, well, remember that priority listing there. Now, okay. of course, you want to get the tick and the tack, you'll get $1,000 automatically. Avoid the dragon at all costs. I, I don't have to warn you about that. It's covered up. Everything's hidden. And uh, before we get started, I think we're going to have what? The whole audience is going to help you choose a number. Oh, good. All right, let's get some help from that. There you go. Where do you want to go first, Candace? I'll take four. All right, she's going for number four. Tack. That's a nice start. All you need to tick. Or a lot of money. Six. She's going it alone, folks. She says number six. Number six, $300. All right, that's a nice start. What do you think? How about seven? seven? Number seven, okay. Bottom left-hand corner, 500 Whoa, you're up to 800 All you need is 200 more or a tick. Uh, I'll take number three. Number three, she is very determined to try number 250 Whoa. We did it, that's right. I was trying to add it all up in my head, but meanwhile, it was That's right there in front of us. You just did it. Great. Congratulations. Let's take a look where that dragon was hiding out. There he was, behind number two. Hey, good job. You faced him down. You beat him. You're all smiles, and I like that. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look what you're up to now. $6,000. Why don't you head on back to the podium? We'll go into your next game. Now, of course, for her to play a game, she needs an opponent, and I know Charlie O'Donnell right this very moment is going to introduce that person now. Oh, uh, Jim, you're so right. He's an attorney and writer whose interests include sailing and baseball. Meet Bob Nunu. Hello, Bob. Hello, Jim. You're a you? big baseball fan? Oh, I love baseball, both professional and I love to play it myself. As a matter of fact, some friends and I have a little game that we pick up every Sunday morning. I, uh, yeah, what position do you play, Bob? Uh, well, I play a lot of different positions, but the one that I like best and I'm best at is first base. As a matter of fact, they kind of have given me a nickname. They, they call me Moose. Moose. <laughs> you don't look like a moose. How'd you get the nickname Moose? Well, a guy looks like me wouldn't exactly call me Deer, would you, Jim? <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, well, uh, Moose, it's time to see if, we, if you can pick up a few bucks uh, oh, after we uh, take a break. And, in fact, let's take that break right this very moment. We'll get into a game right after this. Run away. Once again, here's Jim. All right, Charlie. Of course, Candace Kraft is our new champion. She's already won lots of money, and we'll see if she can continue on that role in a brand new game. She's got Bob Nunu as an opponent, and let's take a look at those categories that you're go both going to be playing with today. They are Take a Letter, Top This, Country Music, Opera, Animals, Three to Win, Mixed Words, Take Two, and Names the Same. So, we're going to get started with Candace as our champion, selecting to begin. Okay, can I take names the same? 
Well, as a matter of fact, you can, Candace, and here's the question. A basketball legend named Wilt shares his last name with a former British Prime Minister named Neville, who promised peace in our time just before World War II began. What is the last name they both share? Chamberlain. Chamberlain is right. Wilt and Neville Chamberlain. Candace puts an X on the board for you. So with $200 in the pot, let's go ahead and shuffle everything around. And Bob, your first pick of the game. Uh, Jim, let's try country music in the center. All right, you know you'll have some extra time. There's two parts involved in this question. I'll describe two performers who were not born in the United States, but who won the Grammy for Best Female Country Vocalist, and you give me their last names. This Canadian singer named Anne won for her 1974 hit, Love Song. Number two, this Australian singer named Olivia won for her 1973 hit, Let Me Be There. Here's your extra time, Bob. <laughs> Bob, uh, I'm describing two performers who were not born in the United States, but who won the Grammy for Best Female Country Vocalist, and you must give me their last names. Number one, this Canadian singer named Anne won for her 1974 hit, Love Song. Murray. Anne Murray is right. Number two, this Australian singer named Olivia won for her 1973 hit, Let Me Be There. Newton John. Olivia Newton John is right. And you have that center box, Bob. X goes on the board. We're up to $500 in the pot. Let's go ahead and shuffle them all about. And Candace, back to you. Um, I'll take names the same in the upper left. Candace, this actress and singer named Pearl shares, or they share, the last name with an inept comic book soldier named Beetle. What is their shared last name? Bailey. Right! Okay. Pearl and Beetle Bailey, a comic character and a terrific singer, Pearl Bailey. Puts an X on the board for you. We're up to 700 in the pot now. Let's go ahead and shuffle again. And, Bob? Uh, Jim, let's try names the same in the top center, please. Getting a lot of play this particular game. Listen up, Bob. An American presidential candidate named Adley, who ran against Eisenhower and lost, shares his name with a Scottish author named Robert, who is best known for his adventure and mystery stories. What is their shared last name? Stevenson. Adley and Robert Lewis Stevenson is right. Okay, we're rolling along here. 900 bucks in the pot. And you, of course, have that O on the board. Let's shuffle them again. Candace, back to you. Oh, I'll take three to win on the bottom, please. Special category. Either one of you can get the box in this special category called three to win. Of course, Candace, you want to block. Bob, if you get this box, you'll become our new champion. Now, I'm going to read questions to both of you. When you think you know the answer, hit your buzzer. Whoever correctly answers three questions first wins the box. The subject this time is on automobiles. Hands on the buzzers. Each year on Memorial Day weekend, this city hosts a famous 500... <laughs> Bob. Indianapolis. That's right, you have won. In 1957, Ford Motor Company introduced... <laughs> Bob. The Edsel. Edsel is right. Oh, How? If you get this next question, or any other next question, you'll have the game, Bob. This sturdy vehicle was first used by the military. Its nickname comes from its... <laughs> Candace! Jeep. Jeep is right. It's now one to two. In 1906, this advanced steam-powered... <laughs> Bob, for the game. The Stanley Steamer. That's right! That's right, Bob. Stanley Steamer does it for you, Bob. Congratulations. A vertical tic-tac-toe. Way to go, Bob. I almost, uh, I'm almost i sitting here with a little dizziness coming over me. That was exciting. These special categories that get me every time. You just picked up, Bob, $1,100. And we'll all kind of take a breather for a moment. Candace, we didn't have enough time to get to know you better. But I know that with the kind of winnings you're leaving us with, I'm sure you'll be having some good times. Oh, I enjoyed it. Thank we you. We hope you did. You're leaving us in cash and prizes, Candace, $6,000. And we will be right back to see Bob challenge the dragon right after this. We have a new champion, Moose. Come on over, let's play the bonus game. Oh, man, you have lots of energy. Really? Congratulations, your first game. You've picked up already quite a bit of cash, and in just a little bit, that dragon's going to be jumping around and trying to find a place to hide. But, of course, 
uh, before you go after him, let's find out what kind of prizes are up Charlie O'Donnell's sleeve. Well, Bob, these gifts will summon up golden memories of olden times. First, Bob, here's a gift that harkens back to colonial America, this classic wall clock. Hamilton's Oakdale octagon-shaped wall clock, constructed of select oak solids, Roman numerals, key-wound Westminster chime movement, furnished by Hamilton. Then, revive an honored tradition in your bedroom with this gleaming brass bed. By Drescher, this beautiful, genuine brass bed design, beautifully at home in any setting. It's that special look of elegance only Drescher gives you. Next, warm your toes the good old-fashioned way with a fire in this cozy hearth stove. Lopi's answer wood-burning stove. Efficiency designed to fit your decor and budget with solid brass doors and etched glass details. The answer from Lopi. And finally, Bob, you'll see lavish colonial cathedrals and ruins from the ancient Aztec Empire on vacation in colorful Mexico City. Yeah. Sightseeing the world's second largest city, which blends colorful skyscrapers with old Spanish cathedrals in the ruins of the Aztec Empire. Famed for spicy food, mariachi music, and toreadors, Mexico City is full of things to see and do. We'll fly you via Western Airlines' wide-body jet from Los Angeles to Mexico City. You can count on Western for warm hospitality and friendly service in flight, furnished by Western Airlines. Lines. While there, you'll stay at a hotel that sets the pace in Mexico City, the Maria Isabel Sheraton, close to many great attractions. This elegant hotel offers nightlife and the real excitement of Mexico from the Maria Isabel Sheraton. This olden times package is worth in cash and prizes over $4,200. When's the last time you were down in Mexico City, Bob? I've never been, and I'd love to go. All right, well, let's see if you can do it. You know exactly why this dragon is going to hide, because, of course, he's going to try to surprise you and jump on you. But I can just tell you're going to know exactly what you're doing. Has he found a place to hide? Yes. He's all covered up. Go. Have anybody going to help you out? I would like... He wants lots of help. Well, I think I've got an idea. Jim, let's start with number two. All right, number two it is. He's confident that number two is going to be $100. All right. Not a bad start. Uh, Jim, I think I'll go with number five, please. He says number five is going to drop right down below 100 and hopefully get... Oh! The dragon. Let's see where the tick and tack and the rest of the numbers were. Where were they uh, ensconced? The tick was right below the dragon, the tack uh, over there right next to it. Well, hey, we're going to keep on going. You're going to meet a new contestant in just a moment. You're going to be walking back to that podium right now with $1,100 in hard, cold cash. And let's see who your new contestant is going to be. I bet it's going to be a solid opponent. Charlie? Well, Jim, she's a lab assistant whose interest includes scuba diving and horseback riding. Meet Jenny Bell. Janet, how are you? Fine, thanks. How are you? Well, I'm good. Now, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I work in a hospital lab, and we run diagnostic tests on the hospital patients, and um, I have a horse, and I'm trying to train her for a show horse, and... A lot of other things, too. You know, horses, well, I'm told that horses are supposedly not very intelligent. Do you find that to be true? Working not with this them? one. Really? I have to keep on my toes to stay ahead of her. Well, Otherwise, she'll be training me. Well, we hope that never happens. <laughs> of course, you're going to have to stay ahead of your opponent, Bob, That's our new right. champion, as we get into our next game. But first, let's take a break. We'll come right back with a lot more action. Go, go away. We're not going to have any time to get started on a game. We've got a little time to chat. Uh, Jenny, mm -hmm. you not only involved in horseback riding, but you're also you also like scuba diving, yes, right? Yes, I do. It's really a fascinating hobby. It's a beautiful world down there. Where? Wh what are some of the waters you've? Uh... Uh, a little bit in Jamaica and mostly off the coast of California. How are the waters off of California? Are they uh, cool as varied in as in the winter time. <laughs> do you wear a wetsuit? In the winter, sure. That's cold. Uh, you know, I've always marveled. I, I heard one person talk about uh, being under the ocean about 50 feet at night. Mm -hmm. And you can see the moon? Is it? Yeah. How could that be? Because it's so dark down there that any light from up above will show through, if you're not down too far. But, uh, Don't yeah. you have to be brave and, and not you be know, afraid? You know, you forget. Of... You, you, about the first 10 minutes you're underwater, there's so many things to see and fish and so forth that you forget all about well, being underwater. So. It, it sounds exciting. It I, I've never done it. I look forward to doing it sometime. Maybe you can take you me down. You have to try it sometime. All right, yeah. I will. And, of course, our champion right over here, Bob Nunu, he is going to be coming back and seeing how well he can defend his championship with $1,100 already in hard, cold cash. And we'll find out how well you both do on our next game of tic tac Doe's. Have a good time, everybody. We'll see you next time. Some of our departing contestants will receive introducing Tom's Cold Cream Pump. Now remove dirt and makeup at the touch of a finger. No soap does what Pond's does beautifully. One bite of a Chips Ahoy cookie. 
Please knock that part of those chocolate chips. Chips Ahoy. Original in the blue bag, chewy in the red. Bet you bite a chip. Introducing Blue Bonnet Spread in a big new two pound size. Everything's better with Blue Bonnet on it. Remember the first time you gave me Peppermint Lifesaver? Yeah, if I'd known it'd lead to, uh... You'd have given me the whole roll. <laughs> you bet your Lifesavers. Tic-Tac-Toe is a Jack Barry and Dan Enright production.